Today, I'll be sharing with you a grilled Moroccan kebab recipe using my Oklahoma Joe's Bronco Grill. I'm a hunter, so I'm always looking for new ways to jazz up my wild game meat. Let's jump right in. First, let's grind our meat. Because venison is extremely lean, I'm going to add some fat into the grind. My favorite addition is uncured pork belly. This is important, uncured. It is different than bacon, which is cured. Uncured pork belly has a good ratio of fat to meat and it creates a really rich and delicious flavor that accompanies the venison. When it comes to grinding meat, you need it to be cold. This pork was like 50% frozen still, which can make it a little bit more difficult to cut through. Like meat that's frozen is just a little bit harder to cut, but it's really, really important to keep it cold because that is what will allow things to grind smoothly. After I started cutting this pork belly, I realized that I could make my life easier by cutting it into strips for the grinder. So basically I cut each piece in half lengthwise while leaving about half an inch at the end. This creates one long strip that easily goes into the grinder. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now on to the venison. It's good to have some foresight while you're butchering the animal to make your life easier down the road. I knew that I'd be grinding certain parts of the deer, like the neck, the flank, and parts of the front quarter. So I cubed up the meat prior to vacuum sealing it and freezing it at the time of butchering. It's way easier to cut the meat while it's thawed during that butchering process than it is while it's still partially frozen right before you try to grind. You can still see some crystals on the meat, which means that it's still partially frozen and that's perfect. It's exactly what we want for keeping the grinder running smooth and preventing those gunky backups. Here's a little tip for you. Keep the parts of your grinder in the freezer for about 30 minutes minimum before you start grinding. This, again, helps keep everything cold. You can definitely see a theme here. Cold is good while grinding meat. Grinding meat at home is a great way to save money and it gives you full control of how coarse or fine the grind is, how much or little fat you decide to add to it. It's very customizable. I used to not add fat to venison because I wanted to keep it pure, like there's something to going out and hunting an animal and putting so much work into harvesting that meat to then go to the store and buy some pork and cut into the venison. It just didn't feel right. But over the years, I've realized how much better venison tastes when you add fat to it. It is absolutely undeniable how much better it is. So now I love grinding fat into my venison because it just makes it taste so good and so much more enjoyable. I typically add about 20% fat, so it breaks down to be an 80-20 blend of venison and fat. But on this day, I had a bunch of extra pork belly that was defrosted already in my refrigerator and I really didn't want it to go to waste so I ended up using it all so what you're seeing here is slightly more pork belly than I would typically add for this amount of venison but it gets the job done. Next I'm roughly chopping a red onion. You really don't need to be worried about how big or small you cut it as long as it's small enough to fit into the grinder. The grinder will do all of the work in getting this onion as small as we want it. Next, I'm rough chopping some mint and cilantro. If you have some fresh parsley, you can use the fresh parsley as well. And then I'm rough chopping some garlic and fresh ginger. When it comes to the ginger, I'm just using a paring knife to peel off some of that skin. And after I was done rough chopping the garlic and the ginger, I realized that I really need to grate this down smaller. Of course, the grinder is going to do a great job of mixing all of this together, but the garlic and the ginger are such strong flavors. I don't want to bite into any large chunks of ginger or garlic. So it's best to just grate it down into more of a fine paste. Now let's mix up our seasoning blend. I'm using half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Beware of dumping from the box like this. You're really just asking for a heaping avalanche of salt to fall into your bowl, which could mess up everything. But thankfully that didn't happen to me this time. Half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of paprika. When you're shopping for paprika in the grocery store, look for one that has that glorious red color. Like the brighter the red, the better. Half a teaspoon of cumin. Cumin's going to give this some really great body and flavor. Now a bit of a wild card here, we're adding cinnamon. 
I'm only doing about a fourth of a teaspoon and rounding it out with about an eighth-ish of a teaspoon of turmeric. Again, don't go dumping your spices willy-nilly. You will mess things up. I used my hand here and I'm glad that I did. Mix all of those spices together and then we're adding it all together in our big meat lug. So the meat, the fresh herbs, the onion, the seasonings, our garlic, our ginger, all goes together just for a rough mix. And then that will go back in the grinder. Same technique again. If things start to get gunky, just pause for a minute, put that meat mixture into the freezer and then get going again but really we're only grinding such a small amount here you shouldn't have trouble with things getting too warm i'm adding charcoal briquettes to the basket and then using fire starters to light it evenly i want all of the briquettes to be white and glowing hot at the same time so my goal is for everything to light in an even fashion i'm using some tongs to make sure everything is spread out exactly how i want Next, we're going to whip up a tzatziki sauce. First, I'm peeling some of the skin from half of the cucumber and then using a grate to create these small little strips. That cucumber is going into a bowl that already has one cup of plain full fat Greek yogurt. Trust me on this, full fat is the only way to go. Then I'm grating in one garlic clove. These are elephant garlic cloves, so they are a little bit bigger than your normal garlic. I'm juicing in half of a lemon, then chopping up about a tablespoon of fresh dill and just a few mint leaves. Then I'm adding in some olive oil and kosher salt to taste. I stir, 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 and then give it a taste. If it needs more seasoning, I'll add it, stir it up, taste again, and repeat that process until it tastes perfect. Quickly checking on the grill, then getting right into forming our kebabs. I'm adding a little olive oil to our mixture, then just using my hands to form the meat around the skewers. There's no real technique here. You just push it around until it forms to the stick. Don't worry if it feels like it's going to fall off. Just treat it a little gingerly until it forms the shape you want. I promise once it gets to the grill, it will hold together all right. Once your grill's hot, it is time to add the kebabs. Now these guys are going to cook fast, so keep a close eye on them. I'm adding them to the center of the grill where it's the hottest and flipping them over after four minutes or so. There was a storm rolling in in classic Florida fashion. There was lightning and thunder all around us. I beelined for the garage for some cover but I had to run back out to grab the kebabs. Thankfully, we did make it in time. Not five minutes later, it was raining cats and dogs. We barely escaped that storm as the kebabs were grilling. And they don't need to grill very long because they are relatively thin. There was lightning flashing like all around us and they only needed another like two minutes. Like what could I do, you know? So I braved the storm and got them off the grill. The lightning is a big fear of mine. It is time to try this out. It smells incredible. The tzatziki sauce is so fresh. I love the grated cucumber. Oh, so much. Let's dig in, shall we? I'm gonna use a fork and just break a little piece off, just like this. Dip it right in. Cheers. Whoa. Whoa, a lot of flavors going on. Really fresh from the tzatziki, all kinds of spice. I can taste the turmeric, the paprika, the cumin, the cinnamon even. I would never know that it was cinnamon if I wasn't the one who put it in there. It's so subtle. Is it possible that they're somehow dry? Did you think that? Not really. Like even from all that pork? These are really fun. Totally different than our norm. I'm like dunking it in this tzatziki. Mm. There's a lot going on, but it's all pretty subtle, like at the same time. Nothing is super overpowering or overbearing. It still tastes like venison. You're not hiding the venison flavor. It's pretty darn good. Mm. That is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For more episodes of Source to Smoke, you can check out Oklahoma Joe's YouTube channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.